Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Night Live with Rob. Tonight we're going to be talking about the best truck gun. Lots of options out there, a lot of things to discuss tonight, and I hope I can give you a lot of really good information to help you choose the best firearm possible for your truck. Before we get into it, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps with our algorithm with YouTube and allows us to be able to reach more people. So please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody tonight that tuned in and is watching the show. I'm really looking forward to uh, to this topic. This is one that I've had a lot of requests for. I uh, even had some requests for it during the live last week. And I was like, you know what? This would be a great opportunity to really sit down and talk about the best truck gun. And there's, you know, I really hate to say it, but there is really no single best truck gun. What may be best for you uh, or me, what may be best for me may, may be different for you, just kind of depending on your situation and where you are. And we're going to get into that in just a second. So let's, uh, let's jump right into it, guys, and, and really kind of dig into what makes the best truck gun for you. So the first question that we want to ask is, where do you live? Do you live in a major city? Do you live in a rural area? Uh, are you surrounded by woods? Are you surrounded by farmland? Do you live in a subdivision? What's your range going to be with a firearm? Is it going to be a short range weapon? Is it going to be an intermediate or a long range weapon? Are you concerned about over penetration? Are you concerned about misses? Where are those bullets going if you have a miss? And guys, listen, if you're in a gunfight, there's a good chance that you're going to have misses and you have to account for every bullet that you fire out of your firearm. You know, if you, if you shoot an innocent person trying to protect yourself, you could still be charged with manslaughter. So you have to account for every bullet that leaves the muzzle of your firearm. And misses are one of those things that are, they happen in gunfights. You know, you're, it's not a static situation. Targets aren't just sitting there. People aren't just standing there waiting for you to shoot them. Everybody's moving. Everything's a dynamic situation and you're going to have to account for those bullets. So make sure that you take that into consideration when you're choosing the proper truck gun for yourself. You know, really dig into, look at the area around you. Where do you live? You know, if you're, if you're in a major city, honestly, a 5.56 or a 308 may not be the best choice for you because you're... Your distances are going to be limited. You're going to be uh, surrounded by people. You're going to have people around you everywhere, whether you're on the road or whatever. Um, and those are things you really have to consider. Where, you know, the country boy that lives out in the middle of uh, Illinois, in the middle of corn country, and there's nothing but corn stalks for the next 17 miles, you know, he could really strap a, you know, a 50 caliber on the back of his seat, a Barrett, you know, a Barrett M82A1 on the back of his seat and be comfortable shooting that and not have to worry about hitting someone else. So one of the big things you really want to consider when you're choosing a truck gun is what's going to be right for your particular situation where you live. The next question we're going to ask is where do you travel to on a daily basis? Work, stores, are you going to be around large crowds? going to church, gas stations. You know, these are just some of the areas that you can go where you may need a truck gun. And what's going to be the best truck gun for each of those scenarios? You know, and honestly, the best truck gun may actually be two guns. You know, you may have a, a short range weapon for inside of 100 yards, and you may have a longer range weapon for outside of 100 yards. So, you know, I think it's really important to consider where you're going to be and if you're involved in a in a shooting where you're going to need a truck gun, what what's going to be the perfect firearm to help you to survive that situation based on your surrounding areas. So, number 3 and this is this one is really really important to me and it's one that I'm probably going to touch on some people's feels with this one. But this is one that is going to help you keep your truck gun in your truck without it getting stolen, okay? And that's don't advertise that you have firearms in your vehicle, all right? Yep. I was in the Marine Corps. 
I do not have anything on my vehicle that says Marine Corps, right? I have a couple of guns. As you can imagine, it's probably more than two. I don't have gun stickers on my vehicle. My gun stickers are on the door to my shop. My gun stickers are on my toolbox. My gun stickers are all over the place except on my vehicle. I do not advertise firearm companies or guns on my vehicle because I don't want people to know that I have guns in my vehicle. If, and I'm sure you guys see it all the time, and it may be some of your vehicles. You know, you're, you're driving down the road, you pull up to a red light and there's a truck in front of you and the back window of the truck is just plastered with gun stickers. You know, you got the Milan Labe, you've got the Marine Corps, you've got Palmetto State Armory, you've got Colt, you've got CZ, whatever. The whole back window is just covered with stickers. The first thing that I think when I see that vehicle is that's the vehicle that I want to park beside when I'm going to the, the big box store to buy whatever because somebody's going to walk up and break into that truck and walk right past mine. Because that vehicle is advertising that they are pro-Second Amendment, that they are conservative, that they have guns, that they support the gun community. And it's basically a, you know, if I go and break into that truck, I might find a Colt, I might find a CZ, I might find a Palmetto State Armory rifle. There might be a couple that they don't even have stickers on the back of their truck, you know. But it's a, it's a rolling billboard that you have guns in your vehicle, okay. And to prevent you from getting your vehicle broken into and having your guns stolen, don't advertise that. Don't put stuff on your vehicle that says you are a gun owner, okay? And the only reason that I say that is not because I don't want people to know that you're a gun owner. I don't want you to get your crap stolen, okay? I, I'm looking out for you guys. And I see this all the time. I get phone calls weekly from people that their vehicles have been broken into and have their guns stolen out of their car. Either they A, left their vehicle unlocked, or B, they had gun stickers all over their car and their vehicle got broken into. I used to have a guy that worked for me that had, uh, you know, he was former 82nd Airborne, great guy, but he had every sticker known to man on his, on his big four-wheel drive pickup truck advertising all of these different guns and he goes to the store one day and he's in the store big box store he's in the store maybe 10 minutes and he comes out and the window smashed on his truck and every gun that he had in his vehicle was stolen and he he comes back to the shop and he is he is irate i mean mad right he, he's done police report and all of that he comes back to the shop and tells me what happened and i'm like dude look at your truck you are a rolling billboard that's advertising that you have guns in your vehicle. Of course, somebody broke into it. You know, just don't don't advertise, guys. All right, I'll I'll climb off my soapbox now. We we've talked about that. Now let's get into the fun stuff. All right, here's the first big question: Do you want to keep a handgun or revolver in your truck as your truck gun? It's a great question. There. A lot of states now are very conservative with how you can, or liberal, I guess would be the correct term, are very liberal with how and where you can carry a firearm inside your vehicle. In South Carolina, we just had a big law change uh, allowing constitutional carry to where we can carry anywhere in our vehicle that we want. We can open carry or concealed carry without a permit. So lots of great stuff here in, the, in South Carolina, and there's a lot of other states that have those options as well. Um, if you're going to carry a handgun, a semi-automatic handgun or a revolver in your vehicle, one of the things that I really don't recommend is one of the console mounted holsters that you get in, you stick your pistol in the holster and it's easy to access, all right? The reason, and I, and I like those, okay? I like the fact that you can, with very minimal movement, you can grab your handgun and, and have it ready to be able to use it if you need it. The downside to mounting those holsters inside your vehicle is they are visible to anyone in a parking lot that's walking by. They can walk by your car, your truck, they can look in and see that holster right there mounted on the side of your console. And at that point, they've got two questions. They've got, you know, do 
it, does the person have the pistol on them that owns this vehicle? Or did they just stick it in the console and leave it in the console when they went in the store? If mounting one of these console mounted holsters for a handgun inside your truck is something that you are just 100% I'm going to do this. This is going in my vehicle. If you go to a store or whatever, at least take a rag or a t-shirt or something and throw it over the top of the holster so it doesn't stand out and it's not visible to someone walking by looking for a quick smash and grab on your vehicle. Handguns are great. I'm, I'm a big handgun guy. I've shot handguns competitively for like 25 plus years and I'm, I'm very comfortable with a handgun. Handguns are for most people 10, 15 yards and in is going to be like your maximum effective range. The handgun itself is more effective, is effective at much longer ranges than that. Most people just aren't able to take advantage of the longer range because of the very short sight radius on a handgun. Red dots do allow you to extend your range quite a bit. Um, so, you know, that's, that's an option. If you do want to run a, a red dot on your handgun to be able to extend your range out further, that's something that you can consider. But if you're going to, if you're planning on extending your range further than the, like that 15 yard range, make sure you train with that firearm, make sure you train with that handgun at distances exceeding 45 feet and you're, you're comfortable shooting past 15 yards, All right? Me personally, most of my handgun training that I do is the minimum distance that I shoot with a handgun is 25 yards. I, I do most of my training and practice with a handgun from 25 to 50 yards. The reason that I do that is if I can make fast, accurate shots on my targets at 25 to 50 yards, when I move back into handgun distances from muzzle contact distance to you know, 10 yards, 15 yards at the max, I know that I can make reliable, fast, accurate hits at very close distances from shooting longer distances with my handgun. So just a consideration, I do recommend carrying a handgun in your vehicle because nine times out of 10, it's gonna be quicker to access than your long gun. And the handgun will give you some vital time that you may need to get to your long gun. I've always said a pistol is nothing more than a tool to fight somebody off long enough for me to get to my long gun. Because ideally, if I'm in a gunfight, I want a long gun. Long gun is the best compared to handguns. You know, I, I much prefer a long gun in a gunfight. So let's jump into rifle options and talk about some rifle options. And, and there's a lot, you know, obviously the first thing that comes to most people's mind is either an AR or an AK platform. And they are both tremendous, tremendous truck guns. That's with where I live in the area that I live and the distances that I'm able to engage in my area. An AR 15 is absolutely perfect. And that's what I keep behind the seat of my truck. So spoiler alert, Handgun in my console, the Glock 19, and an AR-15 is strapped on the back of my seat. I, uh, I've got my little, you got, maybe some of you guys have seen it in my videos. I've got a little uh, Toyota Tacoma that I've had forever and today. It's an awesome little truck, four-wheel drive. I take it everywhere. My wife and I, we go off-roading a lot, but it's a single cab. It's not a double cab, so I fold the seat forward on the back side of the seat. There's the springs back there, and I have an AR-15 strapped on the back of the seat and a little, I've got a little magazine pouch that goes on the back of the seat as well that's got six magazines in it. So super fast, easy to access, but that is in my area and the distances that I could potentially, the engagement distances that I could potentially have here, that is my weapon of choice, is the AR-15. I've got 75 grain bolt tail hollow points in it. There, it's a little heavier bullet. It carries more mass. It expands really well in very short distances. Um, if you've ever seen some ballistics testing done with 75 grain boat tail hollow points, they almost explode on impact. So you, you're not getting a ton of penetration and, you know, don't, don't think with those that you're going to be shooting through doors and walls and stuff like that without the bullet starting to come apart. But for, for what it's designed for, it is a great, great projectile for stopping a threat. 
your situation may be different. You know, if, if I was an Iowa farmer and I'm concerned about two legged and four legged problems, you know, you've got your, you've got coyotes, you've got feral hogs, um, which are an issue almost nationwide now. You may want to look for something with a little more horsepower. You may want to have a uh, like an AR-10 in 308, or maybe you're in a little more liberal state that prohibits you from carrying certain firearms or owning certain firearms because of certain capacities on the magazine. Maybe a lever action or a pump action rifle would be more suited, ideally suited for your situation. So. I'm I'm a big fan of picking the caliber of the firearm to your environment and, and to the look at the max distance that the max potential engagement distance that you could have and, and really build your truck gun around the maximum engagement distance that you could have with that particular firearm. And that's where 556 works great, 308 works great. Maybe you want something with a little more horsepower because of four-legged critters and you want to step up to, you know, one of your Magnum calibers um, or some other options. But I really try and base my, my truck gun, my carry truck gun on the situation where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be around and what the potential threats could be. Most of us, the potential threats are going to be two-legged. Okay, that's that's just a reality of it. You know, most of us are not out working in a rural area in farming country or in bear country or hog country. But if you are, I would recommend choosing something that has a little more horsepower to be able to stop a big four legged threat. Two legged threats, the 556 five, works great. And, you know, another thing to consider is your PCC carbines, pistol caliber carbine is a, if you live in a, in more of a urban area, I think the pistol caliber carbines are a great, great choice for urban, for urban protection or urban truck gun. It limits your range to around a hundred yards, but even though your range is limited, your penetration is limited as well because of velocity of the projectile. So for, for you guys that live in an urban area that are concerned about overpenetration, you're concerned about hitting by innocent bystanders if you're in a gunfight, a pistol caliber carbine is a great, great choice. Rangeable ammunition is another great choice if you decide to use a larger caliber. Um, but you can, you can go with the frangible stuff that's going to basically fragment on impact and minimize overpenetration as well. Let's jump into a different firearm and talk about shotguns. Shotguns are a great, great truck gun and could potentially be the ideal truck gun for a lot of us. It is a great firearm for close range gunfights. It's a great firearm for intermediate. You, you can vary the loads that you have in it from birdshot to buckshot, slugs, um, low power or managed recoil slugs, all the way up to full power 1800 plus foot per second slugs, which will allow you to extend your range out to 100, 150, 200 plus yards with, uh, with some of the slug options that are out there now. So definitely don't discount a shotgun, you know, especially like the, one of my personal favorites back here behind me, I've got the, the Remington 870 with an extended magazine tube on it. And, uh, you know, I can stack the magazine with different types of rounds from birdshot to buckshot to slugs. It's easy to carry extra rounds in your vehicle. Just different boxes on the back of your seat, different bags on the back of your seat for different types of rounds. But the shotgun, I think, is one that is often overlooked, but is a very, very devastating defensive weapon. In an ideal situation, you would have a long gun on the back of your seat for extended range. And you'd have a shotgun on the back of your seat for close range work. Okay. So that's, that would be my ideal recommendation would be shotgun mounted up top on your seat and a long gun, AR-15, AR-10, bolt action rifle, lever gun, pump, whatever, whatever fits your area under that rifle strapped to the back of your seat. 
but shotguns are shotguns are tremendous guys you know with the the variety of shells that you have available for them um it's just a tremendous tremendous firearm and, and absolutely devastating in a gunfight let's uh let's jump over and take a look at a few questions that we've got tonight and then we'll jump into our next topic uh, lots of guys jumping in here hello tonight Uh, George Boone says, what would be the best truck gun from Palmetto State Armory? You know, uh, George, probably one of their, you really have a choice between three. You've got their, and we'll start with the smallest. We've got their pistol caliber carbine. And my, my choice would be one that uses Glock magazines. Would be a great urban option. You've got the pretty much any of their AR-15s that they make. Uh, my personal choice would be one with either a nitrided or a cold hammer forged barrel. Um, but, you know, nitrided cold hammer or cold hammer forged barrel, free float handguard, collapsible buttstock, 14 and a half inch barrel with a pinned and welded flash hider or muzzle brake or a 16 inch barrel with a flash hider or muzzle brake, your choice. Um, 30 round magazine minimum. Um, and honestly, I'd probably go with a red dot optic or a variable one to six or one to eight with an illumination option. But that would be, those would be my first two. And then if I was looking for something with extended range and a little more horsepower, I would look at one of their AR-10s. Um, in the exact same setup as the AR-15 with a 16 inch barrel, the free float handguard, uh, one by six or one by eight optic and uh, put a good trigger in it. But uh, that would be, those would be my choices if I was looking at something from Palmetto State Armory. Uh, John G says, hey Robbie, any experience with a console vault that gets bolted into the center console of a pickup? John, actually, yes, I do have quite a bit of experience with those as well as the, uh, the vaults that go in the back of a Jeep and the vaults that go in the back of a pickup truck uh, under a bed cover. Um, the ones that I've used have been absolutely outstanding. They are they are super solid and anchored, and we're going to jump into that a little bit more when we get into our next topic. But uh, So stay tuned for that one, guys. Uh, John Richardson says 14.5-inch BCM quad rail with 75-grain Hornady tap at the ready. Good evening, sir. John, good to have you on tonight. Man, that is a great, great truck gun choice, bud. Uh, Joey says, thoughts on 300 Blackout. Joey, I am a big fan of 300 Blackout. It is, it is a great, great cartridge for its designed purpose. Uh, the 300 Blackout was really made to be the ideal round for door kickers. Right? It, is a, it is a close range cartridge, and I'm talking about subsonic right now. But the, the 220 grain subs are absolutely devastating at close range. You're limited to 50-ish yards with them. You, know, you can shoot it out further than that. You can shoot it to 100 plus. But it, you get a lot of drop past 50 yards. So the, the 300 blackout with subsonics from muzzle contact distance to 50 yards is a devastating, devastating round. You can switch out to, uh, <coughs> excuse me just hit puberty my voice is cracking but you can switch out to uh some of your lighter projectiles 125 to 140 grain um to give you extended range capabilities with it and be able to stretch it out to two 300 yards but uh the blackout is a great great option that a lot of people overlook um you really have to do your research on the barrel that you're going to use um a lot of ars on the market one you want to make sure with a 300 blackout that you only get it with a pistol length gas tube. Don't get a carbine length, don't get a mid length, and definitely don't get a rifle length gas tube. The gun's not gonna run with any of those. It's only gonna be reliable with a pistol length gas tube. It just doesn't have enough volume of gas to cycle the bolt when you go longer than a pistol length, uh, whether it's supers or subs. So stay with a pistol length gas system and look at the gas port size on the barrel before you buy it. If you're gonna run supers and subs in it, the gas port needs to be 115 thousandths in diameter. 
If it's any smaller than that, it's not going to be reliable. Any larger than that, and it's going to be grossly overgassed. 115 is the magic number for gas ports on the 300 blackout running supers and subs. So I've done a ton of testing with them for over 10 years. And barrels from every company you can possibly imagine. Most companies ship their barrels with a smaller gas port. The gas ports are generally 086 to 093. And the guns run great with supersonics in them and with a smaller gas port like that. But they will not run reliably with subsonics from you know, 220s or 208s or 190s or whatever. It's not going to be reliable. So if you want the gun to be reliable and run subs and supers, 115 on the gas port. If you have a barrel that you absolutely love that you're going to buy and the gas port's smaller than that, make sure you get a reamer and ream it out to the proper size so it will re be reliable with the, your subsonics if you're planning on shooting supers and subs. Uh, Gerald Montanona says, for 9mm pistol caliber carbines for our truck guns, you recommend 124s, 115s, 147, or another grain? <clears throat> Gerald, I'm a huge fan of either 124s or 147s. If, if I'm running a suppressor on it, I prefer the 147s. If I'm not running a suppressor, I prefer the 124s. Uh, I do have some friends that like the 115s, uh, especially in a PCC because of the added velocity. You know, you're up with a 16 inch barrel, you're up at like 15, 16, 1700 foot per second with 115 grain nine millimeter uh, Winchester white box or Federal American Eagle. Uh, it does boost the velocity quite a bit. So it's another thing to consider is, are you over pressuring the cartridge with the longer barrel? Uh, that's one that you want to, you know, you're not going to want to get some, uh, you know, Israeli plus P plus that's already going 1,350 foot per second and try and run that in your pistol caliber carbine. You're probably going to have a case head separation if you do. Um, stick with uh, regular 9 millimeter or at the most plus P. Uh, don't try and do plus P plus in a pistol caliber carbine. You're probably going to have case head separations if you do. Uh, John Prime Sr. says, why are the AR-10 magazines of lower capacity than the AR-15? John, that's a great question. Uh, the easiest answer that I can give you for that is just the size and the weight of the magazine. Um, by the time you get up to a 30-round magazine or a 40-round magazine for an AR-10, that's a lot of weight that the magazine spring is trying to push up and keep those rounds fed up in the magazine so they'll feed reliably. Um, most of your AR-10 magazines are either going to be 10, 15, or 25 round magazines. Um, and, and all three run really well. But going to a larger capacity magazine, you would have, a, have to have a much larger, much longer, stronger re magazine spring to be able to keep those rounds fed up so the, the magazine would feed reliably. Um, and then the other issue I think is just overall weight. You know, if you're, if you're putting 30 or 40 rounds of 308 in a magazine and sticking it in the bottom of the gun, you're adding pounds of weight to that gun. And it, the gun starts to get really, really heavy, you know, especially for something that you're going to be using. And generally in a, in a truck gun situation, you're probably going to be shooting it offhand. So you go from a, eight and a half to a 10 pound rifle, you know, eight and a half, maybe to 12 pound rifle on an AR-10 with an optic and a loaded magazine in it. And now you've already added another couple of pounds to it. So now you're up to a 14 pound rifle. That's a lot of gun to hold up and try and shoot accurately offhand. So cutting down on the, the magazine capacity, I think it, it helps with reliability with those firearms as well as lightens the rifle up some to make it easier for you to shoot. Uh, Axeman says concealed carry in 10 millimeter and 300 blackout pistol. I, I think both of those are great choices. The, uh, and, and honestly, you could do as much with the 10 millimeter as you could with the 300 blackout pistol. You could probably do a pistol caliber carbine in 10 millimeter that would do everything that the 300 blackout subsonics would do and more. Um, so just a consideration to throw out there. Uh, Don Filkin says, hi, Rob, what are your thoughts on the Rossi 92 16 inch? Would that make a good truck gun? You know, the Rossi 92 is a little lever gun. Uh, lever guns are a great, great truck gun. Uh, they've, they've been truck guns for probably longer than a lot of us have been alive. 
Um, I'm a big fan of lever guns, whether they're, you know, the Marlin 336 is probably my personal favorite. The Winchester Model 94 has been around for well over 100 years and is just as reliable and accurate today as it was 100 years ago. Uh, but great, great firearms. And both of those lever guns are always, in my opinion, a great choice for a truck gun, whether you're doing it in a pistol caliber, 38 357 Magnum, or you're doing it in a rifle caliber like the 3030 or 35 Remington. Uh, lever guns are, are always a good choice. Uh, Gotten Guns jumped in here tonight. Hey, bud, good to have you. It's great to see you at the gathering. Uh, he says, "What's uh? it's been a long time since I've been in the chat. Hope you're doing well. I am. I hope you're doing good as well, bud. And uh, we'll catch up with you soon uh, at another event. Uh, Philip says, hey, Robbie, what do you think about the 14.5 six millimeter arc? The six millimeter arc is an awesome cartridge uh, and is a great, great choice for uh, intermediate to long range. It, it's not, it probably wouldn't be the ideal choice for, you know, CQB type stuff just because it, it is a, a faster little, a faster little round, but it's a great, great choice for intermediate to longer ranges for a truck gun. You know, for somebody that lives in an area where they're looking at, you know, issues with coyotes or maybe hogs, as well as potentially two-legged critters, the six millimeter arc would be a great choice, you know, to be able to really stretch one out and, and take a longer shot. It's a great, great option. Uh, Gun Gun says, your friends like 115 grain, they're not close friends, are they? Uh, well, you know, as long as they're outside of about 100 yards, I'm good. So, <laughs> uh, Axeman says, agree about the AR-10 mags uh, or clips, as Robbie says. Uh, a 50 round drum for uh, for 308 fully loaded is roughly four pounds. Yeah, and, and that's a lot of weight, guys, to be hanging off of your rifle. You know, it's I always say you know when I'm when I'm out hiking and stuff, ounces is pounds. And the more weight that I can trim down, the less weight that I have to carry that will still do the same job. And uh, in a lot of cases, you know, having two or three extra magazines or six or eight extra magazines, you can never have enough of 20 or 25 round mags for your 308 will do everything that that 50 round drum will do, but it'll keep the weapon lighter and easier to move around. Uh, Russ Michael, glad you like my display of lever guns. Russ, that was an amazing display. I, I really appreciate you sending those pictures to me last week. I, I did really enjoy that. Uh, Minnesota Secret Squirrel, thinking of 12 gauge Mossberg shockwave for its size and power. Uh, the shockwave is a great option. The only, my only issue with any of the pistol grip shotguns is it's, it's difficult to aim them and it's difficult to shoot them really fast. Um, you know, with, depending on, you know, your state that you're in, if you're allowed to have, uh, short barreled weapons, short barreled shotguns, uh, short barreled rifles. If, if I had a Mossberg shockwave, the first thing that I would do is send in the paperwork for it and file for an SBS, short barreled shotgun. And it would be in the back seat, it would be on the back of my seat with a butt stock on it. With a short barrel, maybe a little magazine extension to add a few extra rounds to it. But uh, I, I do prefer a butt stock on a shotgun just because it does make it much easier to aim it, shoot it fast, and be accurate with it. Uh, Word Precious says, do you like AK 9mm PCCs? I absolutely do. I think maybe some of the best PCCs on the market right now are the uh, the AK PCCs in 9mm. Uh, so yeah, I would absolutely, I would absolutely choose uh, choose the, the AK PCC for a truck gun. Uh, and uh, he says, I think you have me confused with God, family, and guns. Yes, you're absolutely right. I did. Uh, I've got you confused with uh, with my buddy over at uh, God and Guns podcast. I apologize for that. But hey, either way, still great information, great content, and great to have you on tonight, bud. All right, let's jump back over here and get into our next category, which is storage. We talked earlier about don't put the stickers on your vehicle. Don't be uh, don't be a rolling billboard to get your car broken into. So the next thing we want to look at is storage. How are we going to store our firearm in our vehicle? 
you know, if uh, John was talking about earlier with some of the vaults that go in your console, uh, the console vaults, I think, are a great, great option for a handgun, for handgun storage, keeping valuables in your vehicle. Listen, guys, here's the thing. As with any type of storage devices in your vehicle, vaults or anything like that, they are designed to make it much, much more difficult for someone to steal your stuff. Not impossible, but much more difficult. It's just like having safes in your house. You know, the safe in your house is just like the locks on your front door. If somebody wants to break in, and even though your front door is locked, they're going to kick the door in and break in, or they're going to break a window and come in through a window. The safes in your vehicle are, they're just providing another layer of protection to make it more difficult and take someone longer to be able to steal your firearm. So whether you're using a vault in your console or some of the vault, the rollout vaults you can put in the back of your pickup truck, there's uh, there's vaults that you can get that go in the back of Jeeps and other vehicles that are purpose built for very specific vehicles that bolt in and, and are locking. Um, or whether you use something as simple as a cable lock uh, through the trigger guard or through the bolt on your rifle to secure it inside your vehicle and, and make it more difficult to get. It is a great idea, whatever type of firearm you're carrying in your vehicle, to have it secured in a way and in a manner that is going to make it difficult for someone to just smash your window, grab it, and walk off with it. So I do recommend securing your firearms in your vehicle in, in a manner that's going to make it more difficult for someone to steal it. Um, and then the next thing with storage is ease of access. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways you can store firearms in a vehicle, especially long guns, you know, with your, your little small pickup trucks like I've got, flip the seat forward and the rifles on the back of the seat. There's gun racks that go above your head that mount in the, in the, uh, that, the, I just totally went brain dead. The above the head area in your vehicle. There, there's rifle racks and shotgun racks that mount the guns above your head, um, which are very difficult to see because everything is up and it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Um, so that's an option. If you've got a, you know, your your truck's got, you know, you've got a four door pickup truck. A lot of times the the rear seats in the pickup truck, there's a compartment up under them that folds up. You can store a long gun up under those. You can store a long gun behind the seats in the the back side of a, a four-door pickup truck but try and find a place to store your long gun that's going to be inconspicuous it's not going to be visible to somebody just walking by looking in your vehicle looking for a smash and grab you don't want the firearm to be visible because that that's one of the big things it's it's all about being discreet you know it's uh a lot of guys carry uh, open carry, you know, and I'm I'm all for whatever you want to do. If you want to open carry, that's great. I don't open carry. The reason that I don't open carry is I want the element of surprise if I need my firearm in a defensive situation. In your vehicle is the exact same way. You want the element of surprise as well as someone not being able to see it and just smash and grab your vehicle or smash and grab your window and, and walk off with your firearm. Uh, Let's, uh, let's move into our next topic, which is uh, extra magazines and ammunition. How much is not enough or how much is too much? Uh, too much, I don't believe there is such a thing. Uh, but you do want to make sure that you have enough ammunition. You know, like I was talking about earlier, I've got uh, a little pouch on the back of my seat that holds six magazines or eight magazines. Um, and they're, all the pouches are full. I, I download my magazines a little bit. I only load 27 rounds in my 30 round magazines because I don't want my springs taking a set being fully loaded and causing, causing a magazine spring fi fatigue. Um, so I only load 27 in all of mine. And I know that all of my magazines only have 27 rounds in them. So if I'm counting rounds when I'm shooting, I know when I start getting down close that it's time for a reload. One thing you do want to consider is if you do have some sort of pouch on the back of your seat, that it could be something that you can remove quickly and be able to take with you. You don't want it just strapped on the back of your seat, or if it is strapped on the back of your seat, 
have it installed with Velcro so you can grab the pouch and rip it off and take it with you if you have to get away from your vehicle in a gunfight. Um, make sure you rotate your ammunition and your magazines out kind of on a pretty regular basis. That way you don't have, you know, it's, it's like the guy that you see that has a pistol that he, he's carried in his pocket for the last 15 years and he decides to go to the range one day and shoot it and it fires one round and the gun jams and he calls me and he's like, there's something wrong with my gun. I don't know what it is. I, I took it to the range and shot it and it, it jammed. And he brings it to me and the gun is just packed full of dirt and dust and pocket lint. The magazine spring is weaker than the spring on a ballpoint pen because it's been loaded completely full and it's taken a set. And the pistol was good for one shot. It was a, it was a one and done. You know, one hit wonder. <laughs> so change out your magazines. You know, I would say once a year, if you at least rotate them out, you know, take them out of the truck after, at the end of the year, swap them out with new magazines and put those magazines in your range bag for training. Um, but I'm a big fan of rotating out my magazines and keeping my stuff fresh so it's going to work when I need it. I prefer a loadout on my vehicle. Yeah, in my truck, I try and keep 300 rounds in my vehicle for rifle and handgun. Uh, not individual, uh, but 300 total. So I've got 300 rounds for, actually it's only like 240 for my rifle, and then there's like 60 rounds for my pistol that I keep in my vehicle. But always keep more than you need, because it's always better to need it and to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So you know, 200 to 300 rounds. Uh, total for the, if you've only got a single gun in your vehicle, I'd probably go with 300 rounds. If you've got multiple guns, I'd probably do like 250 and 50 somewhere around there. That way you have enough for your handgun to be able to get you to your long gun in case you need it. So that's uh that's everything on extra magazines and ammunition. Let's jump back over here to the questions, see what we've got over here, and uh, then we'll start looking at wrapping up, guys. Uh, WordPress just says mounting a holster point in a vehicle too. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's a bad idea, but like I was talking about earlier, if you're going to mount uh, a holster in your vehicle, make sure you have something that'll cover it up so it doesn't look like you have a holster mounted in your vehicle for somebody walking by looking for a quick smash and grab. Uh, Warrior Football 81, Semper Fi brother up in the Northeast. Good to have you here, Warrior Football. Uh, Lost tourist, uh, physical lock or keypad, just wondering as batteries can die. You know, personal choice. Um, I've got a biometric in my vehicle and uh, I change out the batteries once every six months because I'm kind of OCD about stuff like that. I do have a key for it as well uh, in case the batteries do die so I can still access it. But um, the keypad stuff, most of the keypad stuff that's out there now is super reliable. The batteries last forever in them and, you know, as long as you replace the batteries, especially being in a vehicle where it's hot and cold, hot and cold versus in a climate controlled environment like your home, uh, replace the batteries every six months or once a year and you won't have any issues with them. But the uh, the key lock or the uh, the keypad and the biometric stuff is just so fast now that it, it almost it almost makes the physical locks obsolete, in my opinion. Uh, Frag Out Design Studios says. Once I reach the amount I can't possibly count anymore, I knew it was at a good amount. Yes, sir. That is a that is a good place to be. Uh, and then he says, also keep an eye out for humidity. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good thing to consider, guys. You know, especially if you live in the uh, the sunny south, uh, where basically in the summertime everything rusts just from the air and the moisture in it. Uh, if you are storing a, a firearm in your vehicle not a bad idea to keep it wiped down keep the metal surfaces wiped down with a good coat of oil uh oil or oil depending on what part of the country you're from i get i get harassed about that all the time keep it wiped down with a good wet lubricant how about that and uh something that's going to stay in place that way your firearm doesn't end up rusting in your vehicle uh, X-Men says, uh, go with a lock. I had a clamshell style keypad, the wire or a keypad, the wire snap near the hinge, making it unusable. Took forever to get into it. Yeah, and I would, if I was going to do a, uh, biometric or a, a, a digital type 
keypad in my vehicle, I would definitely recommend using one that has a keyed option as well. So that way, if something happens with the biometric, the batteries die, whatever, or the keypad fails, the batteries go dead, at least if it has a key option, you can still get into it without having to break stuff. So just another consideration. Uh, Warrior Football 81 says 762 by 39 or 300 blackout for a truck gun. Uh, which would you prefer? Uh, if I was looking at, honestly, right now, I'd probably go with 300 blackout just because 762 by 39 has gotten much harder to get and much more expensive. So if I had a choice, I'd probably go 300, bla 300 blackout just because you can do subs or supers. It runs really well in an AR platform. Um, you know, if you asked me that question five years ago, when 762 by 39 was so readily available, I would have probably said 762 by 39, uh, just because it was inexpensive. Um, you could stock up on a ton of it, but, uh, you know, if you've got 10,000 rounds of 762 by 39 laying around and no, th no 300 blackout stuff, I'd go with the 762 by 39. But if you're looking at, if you don't own either one of them and are looking at going out and buying one or the other, at this point, I'd probably look, I'd lean heavier, heavier toward the 300 blackout than the 762 by 39 for ammunition availability, as well as um, different projectile choices that you have with it from subs to supers, lightweight, heavy projectiles. Uh, Frag Out Design Studio says, uh, Keep a can of rim oil in your truck. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of rim oil. A lot of guys use it. A lot of guys have had, I guess, good results with it, but it 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 evaporate it's got evaporators in it and the oil will evaporate very quickly. Um, I think it does have some sort of protectant in it that's supposed to keep the your firearms from rusting, but you know, I, I like something that when I pick my gun up I can still see a sheen on it from the oil. Or, or oil that that doesn't uh, that doesn't evaporate so i'm i'm a big fan of synthetic oil um whether it's synthetic engine oil for a car whatever uh, but i do like 100 percent synthetic i don't like um, non-synthetic lubricants i think non-synthetic lubricants can dry they can harden um, and cause some issues so i always go with a synthetic lubricant guys that's uh that's about it for the questions, and that's about it for the uh, for the topic for tonight. I hope I was able to give you guys some really good options and choices and uh, some thought-provoking conversation tonight about the best firearm for your vehicle. You know, what's the best truck gun? It really depends on where you live. So make sure you choose wisely when you're picking a, a firearm for your vehicle. And hey, it, don't be afraid to pick more than one. You know, there's shotguns work great, long guns work great, handguns work great. Why not have all three in your vehicle? So make sure you, you do your research and pick what's going to work best for you in your situation. Once again, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to help the channel to continue to grow and allow us to reach more people, uh, as well as the thumbs up for the video tonight. Again, thanks for watching and subscribing. God bless everybody tonight. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern.